Hi, welcome to Adventasana day 17. It's getting close to the big day and we have a great pose, Sutta Virasana for you. So Virasana is the hero pose and it was our number one day of Adventasana and it's this pose where, if you remember it, we sit in between the feet on the floor and we said that that might not suit everyone so if that's the case you come up onto a block and you lift it up. Never allow your knees to experience pain. So if that's the case for you in this pose, then do one of the other poses that we've already done that you enjoy. So supta, whenever you hear that in the, in the yoga language, um, it means reclined. So it's that hero pose, but we're going to recline. So Rosie. Come and sit in Virasana, which is the hero that we did day one. And come a little bit further forward because she is going to lie back and it's always nice to use your mat to balance yourself on your mat. It's part of the practice that we don't kind of spill over out of ourselves. Plus it's more comfortable, especially on this lovely mat. Okay, come into Virasana. So just as a reminder, your knees, you start with your knees together. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to have the knees jammed together. They need to be in line with our own hips, but we certainly don't start with the knees wide because then you have to come back from that. So at least if you start here, you've got a space to move out from there. Another trick would be if your knees tend to go off to the sides, a trick would be to put the, a belt. You could use, if you don't have a yoga belt, you could use a bathroom, your robe, your bathrobe belt. And you can kind of just secure the knees like that. It doesn't have to even be super strong. It's just to stop the knees uh, splaying out apart. Okay, Rosie, are you sitting on the floor or are you sitting on your heels? So now she's sitting on the floor, and I know that that doesn't look good for Rosie. Where are you feeling that? Where is it not comfortable? In a tiny bit here. Okay, in the knees. So for me, that's a get out of dodge straight away. So in goes the block. How are you now? Yeah, much better. Okay, so I'm going to go back and lie on the floor. So you can see that now we've created a differential between um, the pe uh, Rosie's pelvis and the floor. So going back is going to be even further back than it would be if your bum was on the floor. So I know that immediately you're going to need some support behind you. And we have yoga props here. We have yoga blocks. So I'm going to use another two to extend the floor and make it, can you see that? To make it kind of on a level now with Rosie's pelvis. And then I'm going to put this bolster in here. So the bolster, when you're placing it, it can either be right in here at the sacrum, which is that big thick bone at the base of your spine. It can be in there, or it can be about two fists distance away. And if it is, then it catches your lower ribs when you lie back. For a lot of people, that's more preferable. Do you know which one you prefer? Do you prefer to have it right in at your pelvis? Right in. Right in. So right in at the pelvis. In it goes. And now, press your fingertips into your heels. Take a breath, lengthen up through the side of your body, bring your shoulder blades back. And we always, always look for that opening. And then walk your hands back and use your arms as a support as you go down over your bolster. And then you have this lovely little home here of the bolster. How is that, Rosie? Great. Okay, so one thing that's really nice, and you can do this yourself, I'm going to do it for Rosie, is to draw the buttock flesh down towards the knees. How does that feel? Yeah. And then, Rosie, take a breath and get long through your side body again. Roll your shoulder blades back. And this is a perfectly good way to stay. Now you can turn the palms of your hands upwards, and you could stay like that. Or, Rosie, inhale your arms and point your fingers up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, draw the heads of your arm bones back. And now bring your arms back behind you. Bend your elbows and clasp your elbows. And now she can use her hands as if they're my hands. And she can draw her 
a side body even longer, get longer out of the waist and all that sticky tissue between the ribs and armpits can open up. And if you're comfortable here, you know, you can quite happily stay for up to five, even ten minutes if you're comfortable. So you'd want to maybe go a little bit higher if you want to stay there for ten minutes. And this is opening the fronts of the thighs, it's opening up into the front of the hips. For some people they'll really feel that as a strong opener, others won't. So it's again, it's always individual. So what might be uncomfortable here for some of you would be that you get a pinch in your lower back. And what I often see is that people throw their head back so that the, the chin sticks up towards the ceiling. So if you throw your head right back, do you see this? So that's now increased the arch in the lower back by increasing the arch in the, um, in the neck, the curve of the neck, you're also increasing the curve in the lower back. And that can sometimes just cause a jamming. Um, oftentimes I'll teach this in class and people just cannot get comfortable in it and I get them out of it, they go down, they stay until it's kind of hurting and if it's hurting it's out you come um, and then for others they can just stay there forever. But just a note that when I started doing this pose I had such issues with my lower back that um, I used to use three bolsters. My teacher used to prop me up on three bolsters and I did that and then it gradually went down, down, down and now I'm happy on the floor. But that took me years and years to be down on the floor. And then you could change the clasp of your hands on your elbows just to be always balanced. So whatever hand you had on top, you could change. And you know, you might do that after a minute, you might do it after two minutes, and then you give yourself kind of two minutes on each side. And then to come out of it, on an exhale, bring your arms forward, Rosie, and place your hands on the floor. And then you're going to use your hands on the floor. So the arms are doing um, the push up here to bring you up from this place. And you lead with your heart, so it's your chest leading rather than throwing your head up. So show us that, Rosie. So on an inhale, push your hands into the floor, bring your chest up, that's it. And it feels wonderful. How do you feel? Great. Wonderful. Yes, wonderful. It's a good pose. Um, some of you will, of course, be able to just lie back flat, and that's fine if you don't need the props. If you want to stay there for longer, though, I would suggest that you use props, whether you're very happy in it or not. And why would we do it? It opens the front of the hips, so it helps with the energy that flows downwards, the downward wind, we call it the apana vayu. So it helps to open up the hips, as do all of these sitting poses when we're working on the hips. And then, as you can see, that it's a big chest opener. So it's a supported chest opener, you can stay there and then all the tissue of the chest and shoulders can passively open. So it's really wonderful. And it's another one of the poses, or it's the first one that I've mentioned actually, that you can do after you eat the Christmas pudding. Because most, um, most yoga poses you can't do um, when you food in your belly. So, thank you very much Rosie and thank you all for watching. Hope you're having a great day. Namaste.